Hello and welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalama Lawson with your top stories this Tuesday evening. Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe has urged citizens to tolerate each other's political and social preferences ahead of elections expected next March. Speaking at the burial of former tertiary education minister Stan Mudenge at the National Heroes Acre yesterday, Mr Mugabe told leaders to earn respect through good deeds, according to the Herald newspaper. The president said there is a need to ensure that you behave as a Zimbabwean who recognizes that your national is also for your neighbor. Your importance is as good as your neighbor's. We may have differences, but we are the same people. Allow others to have their own preferences. Let us recognize these virtues, which make us more united than divided. Let people vote the way they want to vote. The top story in New Zimbabwe centers on the freight workers' strike in South Africa and the implications this may have for its neighboring countries. The story suggests that Zimbabwe's fuel, retail and tire manufacturing industries are suffering because of the strike. An estimated $100 million could be lost, with the flow of goods through the Bait Bridge border post being affected. Zambia, Malawi and the Democratic Republic of Congo also uses the Bay Bridge border post to transport goods from South Africa. Age Metro leads with the story of a man who allegedly thrashed his brother-in-law after an altercation over the money he had supposedly stolen from his sister. Prosper Shamuyarira from Old Highfields is said to have thrashed his sister's husband, Herbert Zimbande, accusing him of stealing his sister's money. The brother-in-law became a victim after Prosper decided to intervene in their family affair where they had an altercation over money which went missing in their house. He denied an assault charge when he appeared before Mbare magistrate Ruben Mkavi. He is due to appear in court on the 3rd of October. Sticking with H Metro and the bizarre story about a man who is claiming to be having monthly periods, the report tells that 30-year-old Frank Chifamba believes he's losing blood from his rear end every month and that this is a spiritual experience. Frank says that this is exactly what women feel when they are menstruating. The report urges caution, however, as the same man has recently claimed that he is being sodomized by an invisible man at night. In sport, Knowledge Musona and Edward Sadomba have joined in training with the Zimbabwe national side as they began final preparations for Sunday's 2013 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier away to Angola on Sunday. Zimbabwe goes into the game with a 3-1 lead from the first leg and must avoid defeat to reach the finals in South Africa next year. New Zimbabwe reports that Al Hilal striker Sadomba, cleared of match fixing last week, joined camp together with Kaiser Chiefs Kingston Ngata, another one of the players given the all clear. Well, it's time to find out who of our football experts prospered with their English Premier League predictions this time round. Here are Liam and Michael with a breakdown of what happened over the weekend. Well, there were lots of goals in the Premier League this weekend, and I'm pleased to say I was a little bit more successful with my predictions. With me, as ever, is my ATV colleague Michael Mambo. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Leo. So let's have a look at what went on. Champion Manchester City, as expected, beat Sunderland at home in a comfortable 3-0 win, with goals from Kolarov, Aguero and Milner. They completely outplayed Sunderland, who were never really in the game. And after a stuttering start, this was definitely City's best performance of the campaign so far. So, Michael, were you impressed with Man City in this game? Well, it seems uh, they've suddenly started playing well, but at, fortunately or unfortunately, I hope probably at the right time, because it seems uh, Chelsea is way off the mark. So City may have a tough time catching up to Chelsea. But they are only four points off. Is it ominous for the rest of the league that they're starting to put together performances? It will draw well off for them. Uh, before when they were playing, their matches were not as good and the team effort, uh, I think it's uh, Balotelli, he's a, he was a bit selfish, he's a different player as opposed to the one that we saw during the European Championship. 
So if he can bring that form in and that teamwork into his play, hopefully City may have a chance of retaining the championship. And um, when Sergio Aguero came on and basically scored after two minutes of playing, he's a real, real top striker, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Uh, it shows the strength and depth that City have if, if they can bring him on as a sub. Yeah. So they have a pretty solid squad. OK, so we're impressed with City. What about Chelsea? Now, Chelsea, they continue their great start to the league with a 4-1 win over struggling Norwich, and that keeps them four points clear at the top of the Premier League. Goals from Torres, Lampard and Eden Hazard and Ivanovic help them on their way. And if they keep playing like this, then they will certainly mount a serious title challenge. They're four points clear at the moment. Are they realistic contenders for the league? They are, realistically. They have a strong case. Uh, it's a different Chelsea team. It's more mobile, it's more fast. Their passing is more fluid. It's, it's not uh, the Chelsea of previous seasons that was mainly based on defending, defending, defending. Now, we've talked about their key attacking midfielders, Hazard, Mata, Oscar, but Torres scored again at the weekend and he looks like he's almost back to his best. Is he important for them? Seeing that the, he's the, the only main striker at the moment, he is very important, but uh, I can't say he's back to his best because if you compare the Torres of Liverpool and the Torres of Chelsea, there's, there's probably maybe about 40 million short. But um, Frank Lampard, also back on the score sheet. I mean, some people thought under Andre Villas-Boas that Lampard was done, but is there more life in his legs? I guess so. You can never write off uh, Frank Lampard because he's been at Chelsea for a very long time and when he plays, it's always with his heart. So as long as the old dog still has heart, he can still kick. Yeah, well, we both predicted big wins for Chelsea in that one, and uh, yeah. we were we were pretty close. I said four one. What did you say? I said three nil. Ah, uh, so we'll, we'll call that one a draw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about your team, Arsenal? They uh, they went behind to West Ham at Upton Park, but showed real class and character to hit back and eventually win three one. The goals came from Walcott, Giroud, and a real stunner from Santi Cazorla. In the past, I think Arsenal's heads would have gone down after going behind, but this season the Gunners have more strength and determination, and that could really see them challenge for the league. Now, Mike, as an Arsenal fan, were you a little bit worried when you went 1-0 down? Not really. I wasn't worried because I knew it would be a tough match, and it's always nice uh, to... If, if a team is going to score against Arsenal, let them score early on, because it gives uh, my team the chance to catch up. Uh, and they did that exactly. Yeah. And Giroud, his first league goal for Arsenal, how much of a relief will that be for him? Probably a big boost, but I've never been worried about him. His, his touches have been sure. Yeah, he's missed the uh, uh, net a couple of times, but that happens to the best of strikers. But all his overall performance is, is top. And we can't not mention the little midfield dynamo, Santi Cazorla, who Wenger, after the game, said it was a pleasure to watch him. Is it a pleasure for you as a fan to watch him play? It is a pleasure. He, he's, he's good at what he does and uh, I don't think there's anyone in the Premier League that does better than him, even, even the likes of Hazard. Is it too early to call him the next Fabregas? It's not too early to call him the next Fabregas. Fabregas is Fabregas. He's gone. Just like there will never be another David Beckham or a Terry Only A player is judged in his own right. But for, for somebody to come into a team on your first season and have such an impact, clearly he's, he's bigger than Fabregas in that regard. And uh, I'd just like to point out that I called that one exactly right. 3-1 to Arsenal. <coughs> what was it you said there? I say 2-1. Okay, well, we still got the right result, but I'm yeah. claiming the victory on that one. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. I think that just has me just edging it overall so far. But what about this week's Game of the Week? On Sunday, the Game of the Week saw Manchester United travel to Newcastle United. Both me and Mike couldn't really see Man United getting a win, but they surprised us all with a comfortable 3-0 victory, a great recovery from last week's loss to Tottenham. 
the Red Devils got off to an absolute flyer with Johnny Evans and Patrice Evra scoring in the first 15 minutes. In the second half, Tom Cleverley's wonder goal finished off Newcastle, although there's some debate as to whether he actually meant it. Overall, this was a vintage performance from Manchester United. So, uh, Mike, you were way up at this one, weren't you? Didn't you have Newcastle winning 3-1, I believe? Not to rub it in at all. Well, I put so much faith in Denver Bar and uh, Cicely, but they disappointed, they let me down. Um, fair play to United, they had a good game, uh, scored when it mattered and killed the game off. Now, have you seen Tom Cleverley's goal? Do you think he meant it? Only he knows whether he meant it or not, but watching the interview after, he did say he meant it, so we'll just give him that one. Well, he's going to say that though, isn't he? But either way, it was, it was a brilliant goal and a comfortable win for United, and it really gets them back on track after two losses in the opening games. They're not as solid as they used to be in defence. Uh, Vidic is now injury prone. I think uh, this is his second or third time being injured and the number of games he's played so far is far and few between. Ferdinand still has the back problem which he keeps complaining about. Uh, so, plus the reinforcements they brought in are also injured in that department. Um, and we should really talk about Newcastle. They had a fantastic season last season. Um, they've not quite lived up to that this season. Do you think they overachieved last season? They didn't overachieve. You, you play and to your best abilities, whether you win, it's fair play to you. Uh, the thing is, like, do, you, do you improve on the current squad that you have, knowing that every other team is going to put all the effort trying to get to the next level? Uh, look at uh, the way Everton is playing. You, you can actually tell that they're, they're strong, they're more bonded. So, in terms of Newcastle's ability, it's still there. They just need to get Cesar back into form. Uh, Denver Bar has started pretty well, but hopefully when those two strikers are firing, we'll see a totally different Newcastle. They are a fearsome combination. Well, thanks for that, Mike. According to some swift calculations I've done down here, we both did pretty well, but I've just about won it with the predictions this week. Well. The Premier League takes a break for the next two weeks, but we will be back on Friday to discuss some of the big international clashes as many nations aim to qualify for the World Cup in Rio in 2014. So, see you then. And finally, today's photo of the day comes from Joshua Jews, who watches ATV every night and can now add our favourite photo award to that trophy in his cabinet. Why not send in your best picture to our ATV Facebook page and you could be the face appearing on the big screen tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and have a pleasant evening.